chair of Auckland Castle Trust, invest, an investment manager, and a uh, very significant philanthropist. Jonathan. Isn't philanthropist the dreariest word in the English language? Um, I'm a, a new boy at all this, and um, it's, uh, 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 I feel rather like a, uh, a boy at my first day at the new school and hearing all the uh, lifetime experience um, uh, brought before me. And I want to uh, think about why I have um, thrown my lot in with heritage. And I've gone back to where heritage started. Heritage is actually quite a young industry. It goes back to the uh, age of the Enlightenment. Um, uh, the British Museum was one of the, the first ones, 1753. And what one sees uh, uh, in the uh, 250 years since then are some signal successes and some signal failures. And the success, I think, can be seen in the attitude that we now have, the respect that we have for old buildings. And it's buildings that I'm really uh, concerned with uh, um, in my life. Uh, um, I'm uh, looking after an old bishop's palace called Auckland Castle which is a plain song, medieval sort of place, which was uh, rudely uh, um, assaulted by James Wyatt in the 18th century and uh, turned into something quite different. And the Victorians certainly got the hang of using old buildings as a springboard for improvement. And I think it's generally accepted that um, uh, the Victorians did what uh, moth, rust, fire, Viking, Vikings, and um, other terrible things uh, have failed to do to our stock of old buildings. And today, we have a great respect for what buildings were intended to be. And as a result, there is an authenticity and a reality in our heritage stock that I think would amaze earlier generations. Uh, but that is uh, only part of the story. And um, I'm reminded of um, uh, looking at the uh, stock of buildings as rather like the British Grand Fleet in 1914. It was the terror of the world. It was the greatest uh, naval force that had ever been seen. And uh, when it came to fighting, it turned out to be completely useless. And the reason it was useless was that the guys didn't know how to use the guns. Now, the reason they didn't know how to use the guns was because before the war, they weren't allowed to uh, have gunnery practice. And the reason they weren't allowed to have gunnery practice is that it made the ships dirty and um, they had to be repainted after being fired. And it seems to me that that is the danger that we face today with our heritage stock. It was lovely to hear Maria just ahead of me suggesting iconoclastically that there might be too many buildings, when of course the theme has been how many uh, buildings there are out there which uh, need um, uh, restoring. And I'm, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's the puppy love of being a beneficiary of an HLF grant, but I'm really struck at the way that HLF is no respecter in the wrong sense of bricks and mortar. We heard yesterday that um, there is a great work going on in Bradford at All Souls. Now, I don't know anything about All Souls, but it doesn't sound to me like Hawksmoor put it together. It sounds to me like a, a resource that is being used for something practical. And my interest in heritage is that it should be used as a resource, not for itself, but for people. And one of the 
troubles, I think, one of the dangers with heritage is that it's easy to get preoccupied with the thing when it is actually the people who matter. And this, the Victorians got absolutely right. Uh, the British Museum in the 18th century was started specifically for the improvement of people. And we saw in that uh, rather absurd video at the beginning, uh, <laughs> quotes from Octavia Hill, who was part of the found founding force of uh, um, the National Trust, that what she wanted to do was to produce armchairs in the countryside for people who lived in cramped, squalid uh, slums in cities. Now, that seems to me to be exactly the way we today should be looking at heritage. It's there to be used and to be used for people. And why, don't we, why do we feel that that's rather um, cheesy language? I think it's because we think it's paternalistic. It, it's it's um, those who have deigning to offer a blessing to people less fortunate than themselves who actually, frankly, don't want that blessing. Now, that isn't at all the way that it is. The real mischief in society today is not deep poverty. It's not cholera in slums. It's a weariness of spirit. And a, a weariness of spirit is a very untheatrical thing. If you, took, if you made a film of it, and like the modern one, it lasted 12 years, by Jove, it would be boring. Because it doesn't have the, those uh, moments which uh, uh, can, 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 can make for theatre. And I think that one of the things that we need in a society like that is something that produces a circuit breaker. Because it's a circuit breaker that can make people uh, change how they are. And it's how people think much more than how they do which brings people alive. And beauty is a very democratic thing. It's no respect for a person. It's the people who are moved by beauty are found everywhere. And it's a, it's a myth that the people who actually go to museums and take uh, 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 inspiration from lovely things are to be found among the educated uh, bien pensant. That's a word I learned from Rod Liddell. I don't know what it means, but it feels like <laughs> it's <obviously laughs> uh, the moment you say it. And that, uh, I have returned from, uh, to my roots, which are in the, in the northeast of England, to try to combat that uh, weariness of spirit. And I believe that by the restoration of Auckland Castle, uh, we have a possibility of transforming the town of Bishop Auckland, which is about 27,000 people, small enough to, to, to make it practical to make a difference to a society, but big enough to make it worthwhile to try. And that, I want to see the place changed socially, economically, uh, uh, morally, and spiritually. And if we can do that by what we're doing at the castle, then I think we will have done something worthwhile. And I'm, uh, this is uh, uh, something which is um, a pioneer work because I'm doing this uh, because I don't believe that uh, a traditional pouring of money into uh, uh, deprivation will make the difference that's needed to that community. And I believe that if we work not doing good to the people of Bishop Auckland or for the people of Bishop Auckland, but with the, Bishop, uh, uh, the people of Bishop Auckland, that we will have something lovely when we've finished. <laughs>